What would happen if you dropped a nuclear bomb on Mount Everest? Mount Everest. It is the tallest mountain on Earth and is 29,035 feet high. The mountain is over 60 million years old and was formed by the movement of the Indian tectonic plate pushing up and against the Asian plate. An interesting fact is that Everest grows by about a quarter of an inch every year and consists of multiple layers of rock folded back on themselves. For humans, climbing Mount Everest is a feat of adventurers and daredevils. It is a badge of honor to most endearing mountain climbers. Since 1924, approximately 300 people have died on Everest, and more than 10,000 summits have been done by more than 5,700 different people. Interesting, right? But did you know that the actual summit of the mountain is a small dome of snow about the size of a dining room table? There's only room for a half dozen or so climbers to stand and enjoy the view. So with all that said, what would happen if a nuclear bomb was dropped on Mount Everest? You naughty you. Before we answer that, let's look at some facts about nuclear bombs. When you think about nuclear weapons, the first things that probably come to mind are the devastating attacks on Hiroshima and Nagasaki in 1945. The bomb dropped on Hiroshima destroyed 13 square kilometers of the Japanese city. It had a yield of 15 kilotons, or 15,000 tons worth of TNT. The heart of the explosion reached several million degrees centigrade. Everybody within half a mile of the center of the blast was killed. The Nagasaki bomb, dropped three days later, was 22 kilotons. Both of these explosions changed the world forever. But since then, nuclear bombs have evolved. So how much bigger can nuclear weapons get? Well, much, much bigger. There's a bomb in the US arsenal that is called the B-83, which can produce a blast of 1.2 megatons. To put that into perspective, one megaton equals one million tons of TNT, which means the B-83 could produce a blast 80 times more powerful than the Hiroshima bomb. And what may be surprising is that B-83 isn't even the largest nuclear bomb ever tested by the United States. That title goes to Castle Bravo, which produced a blast of 15 megatons, or 1,000 times more powerful than the Hiroshima bomb. Pretty crazy, right? Now, if you compare the size of the mushroom clouds, then let's start with the basics. The Empire State Building is 1,400 feet tall. The mushroom cloud created in Hiroshima went up to 25,000 feet, and the one created in Nagasaki went up to 26,200 feet. In comparison, Mount Everest is 29,035 feet tall. Now guess what? That height will pale in comparison to Castle Bravo, whose mushroom cloud can reach a whopping 130,000 feet. So now, if we take a big nuclear weapon, like the 15 megaton Castle Bravo, and detonated it on Mount Everest Peak, it would work like a high altitude explosion, but with the added effects of a ground burst. Well, hey, we're not so sure the climbers and the Sherpas would be so happy with you. And we're not sure people in Nepal would be so happy on the idea either. But hey, let's continue to consider what would happen. The moment a nuclear bomb detonates, several forms of nuclear radiation will instantly permeate the environment. Anyone near the blast center would be instantly vaporized. However, the detonation of a large modern nuclear bomb on the summit of Mount Everest would not level the mountain, as there is simply too much granite rock. Instead, most of the energy would be reflected into the atmosphere and onto the sides of the nearby mountain peaks. The saving grace about Everest is that it does not have any characteristics of a volcano, like magma chamber below or inside it. So likely, the explosion wouldn't trigger a massive volcano to erupt. Instead, snow on the mountain would melt and cause huge avalanches. Since most of the snow would melt either from the blast or because it slid down below the snow line, a radioactive flood would wash away everything that the explosion may spare. Since some 800 million people depend in part on seasonal runoff from Himalayan glaciers for irrigation, hydropower and drinking water, the impact would be far and wide. But that's not all. In the hours and days after a nuclear blast, radioactive contamination from the atmosphere would also travel far, much farther than if it was a regular ground explosion. 
Most of it would fall in China and Nepal, but smaller particles would stay in the upper atmosphere and slowly settle all around the world. We're also pretty sure that post-explosion, nobody could climb Mount Everest for a while. Life would be impossible around it as well. Nearby peaks would be also inaccessible without protective gear for several years to come as well. So, as you can see, if we detonate a nuclear bomb on Mount Everest, it would not be pretty. Do you agree? We hope you liked this video. To help us continue to bring more of these videos to you, don't forget to subscribe to our channel, The Curious Path. Also, let us know your thoughts in the comments.